get your special sock out, nerds. It's gonna get good. Your little cinematic universe is about to change forever. Deadpool and a Wolverine. This just feels right. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Marvel just confirmed who the main villain of Deadpool and Wolverine is going to be, and it confirms a lot of X-Men theories and answers some questions about what's going on with the TVA after the events of Loki Season 2. So, of course, we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. That's supposed to be scary. Pegging isn't new for me, friendo, but it is for Disney. They also just revealed that they've rated a new trailer, which means they're getting ready to release it. That should be sometime soon. So, of course, I will do all the videos for that when we do actually see it. There were a couple Super Bowl teasers that they released. I've already done videos for those, so I'll post links for those at the end of this. They were mostly meant to give people some quick vibes for what's going on during the movie. Let everybody know that the X-Men are coming back in a big way. But the first real trailer, like the first official trailer after that, is meant to be more story-based and give people a better idea for what the actual plot is going to be, not just Deadpool jumping around and a bunch of different scenes cut together. In just this past week, people have spotted Marvel's recent copyright filing for some of the characters in the movie, Zoom and Enhance, confirming Jennifer Garner is coming back as a version of Elektra from Ben Affleck's Daredevil movies and her Elektra movie, and Emma Corrin is playing a version of Cassandra Nova. And even though it would be funny if Jennifer Garner's Electra was one of the villains of the movie, it's actually Cassandra Nova that I'm talking about who is the main villain of the movie. Probably one of the most evil, most sinister, to make as many X-Men puns as possible, characters they've introduced in the X-Men comics. Like, worse than Mr. Sinister, probably Apocalypse, the Brotherhood of Mutants, even though I wouldn't always consider them villains. There are a lot of really classic X-Men villains out there, but because a big part of the plot in Deadpool is him going to the Void eventually and meeting all these variants, like meeting the variant of Wolverine wearing the yellow costume played by Hugh Jackman. Part of the reason why they're using Emma Corrin as a version of Cassandra Nova is she's meant to be a variant, probably quote-unquote, of Professor X from another universe. Originally, she was retconned in as the evil twin of Professor X. That's the super deep cut for the X-Men comics in the movie and for the recent Deadpool movies. During Deadpool 2, one of the main villains was Juggernaut, Professor X's brother. So it's just like another member of Professor X's family. Cassandra Nova has a really crazy backstory, so I'll explain her. She's a relatively newer character from the recent new X-Men run in the early 2000s. That was Grant Morrison's run, so no surprise Deadpool would want to borrow from one of the comic book masters. It's a great run if you haven't read it. They even borrowed a little bit from that run for X-Men Dark Phoenix. The costumes that the X-Men team is wearing during that are from that new X-Men run. Her full name, though, is Cassandra Nova Xavier because Charles Xavier. And as you would expect from Grant Morrison, her backstory is totally nuts. Like, how did Professor X have a twin that we just learned about in the 2000s? He explained that because Professor X was born so powerful, his genetic potential was so great, when he was in his mother's womb growing, it caused the creation of a fraternal twin to form from the living embodiment of Professor X's anti stuff like this cosmic form that took shape because he was so powerful. They explained that the Shi'ar have this concept saying that each person has an opposite or an anti-form of themselves that exists cosmically out there in the universe, but usually it's just this formless cosmic energy that never takes shape, especially for people who aren't that powerful, like normal humans. But because Professor X was so powerful, even in his mother's womb, his anti-self was able to take form, sort of like latch on to him and use that to take form and become his fraternal twin later taking the name Cassandra Nova Xavier, and because they're fraternal twins in the comics, she looks exactly like him, just female. Now, Emma Corrin doesn't look anything like Patrick Stewart, even younger Patrick Stewart, but I think they'll just kind of wave their hands at that. And as I said, I think what they'll probably do, instead of saying that she's his twin from the womb, like this crazy Grant Morrison backstory, they'll just say that she's a variant who was born female in another universe, kind of like Loki and Sylvie, just because the audience is already very familiar with that trope. Like, oh, it's the same character, just born as a female instead of a male. So in the movie, it's likely she comes from a universe where the X-Men just have her instead of having Professor X. Like, there is no Professor X because it was her born instead of him. When they were growing in the womb, Professor X was so powerful that he unconsciously became aware of her, his evil auntie's self, and tried to kill her with his mutant powers, like kill his twin in the womb. 
The event was so crazy, it caused his mother to suffer a miscarriage when she gave birth to both of them, and they believe that only Professor X survived the birth, but Cassandra Nova, having powers equal to that of Professor X, was able to survive as a lump of cells hiding in the walls of the building. Yes, this is right, Grant Morrison actually wrote this slowly creating a body for herself over decades until eventually she was able to emerge looking just like Professor X, but super evil, super pissed off, and looking for revenge against him. She became the main villain of that big Grant Morrison new X-Men run, and she goes about trying to destroy the X-Men, tearing down everything in Professor X's life, mostly succeeding. She kills almost everybody on Genosha, the mutant island, then goes after the Shi'ar Empire, and they were only able to stop her by tricking her into transferring her consciousness into a different body and trapping her in that form. They weren't able to actually kill her, ultimately they could only contain her and wipe her memory. She just came back in the more recent comics too, working with the Hellfire Club and the Marauders. Trying to cause more trouble for the X-Men, Professor X just create more havoc in general. Eventually that group, the Marauders she was working with, tried to trap her in the past too, like even the villain she was working with didn't like her. So as of the more recent comic, she's trapped in the distant past, still very much alive, still very much looking for revenge. During the movie, the whole idea is that this new Paradox TVA Hunter character is trying to recruit Deadpool to become a new agent, just like they did with Loki at the beginning of the Loki series. Like Deadpool messing with all the timelines and Cable's time travel device turned him into a variant the same way that Loki turned into a variant. So it sounds like they're giving Deadpool the same option, like you can become a hunter for us and go around and take care of other Nexus events, like you become a TVA agent, or we can prune you and send you to the void. And it seems like during the trailer, there's a montage of different scenes of him going to different universes and trying to go on missions for the TVA. But at some point, it seems like he does wind up on the void no matter what. The early theory is that Emma Corrin's Cassandra Nova character eventually got pruned by the TVA, sent to the void. But because she's so powerful, because she basically has all the same powers as Professor X, she started assembling her own variant version of the X-Men, like an evil version of the X-Men essentially, more like the Brotherhood of Mutants, and she's threatening to take over the Void and then start taking over other universes as well. And that's where Deadpool and Wolverine have to team up to try and stop her before she can escape the Void. So you have to imagine the plot is a bit of a twist on the X-Men movies with Professor X putting the X-Men together, but an evil version of that with Deadpool, Wolverine, other good X-Men variants trying to stop them. But it does seem like a lot of that winds up happening on the Void planet just because you have so many variants coming from different universes. Here's the thing though, if you're talking about fighting telepaths, another telepath would come in really handy, and Famke Jansen is supposed to be coming back as a version of Jean Grey, but I don't know if that's meant to just be a funny one-off moment in some other universe, or if she'll also be on the void, because that would be a big threat, like her versus an evil version of Professor X, this Cassandra Nova character, so they might want Deadpool and Wolverine to be fighting her without the aid of another really powerful telepath, so she might not be on the void with them too. There's just meant to be a lot of those classic X-Men coming back, but they didn't say if they'd all be on the void, like all on the same planet, or if they'd be in a bunch of different universes separately. Hopefully the movie will not end with a more comic book accurate version of Wolverine just trying to repeat the ending from X-Men Last Stand. This time, instead of him trying to stop the Phoenix from going crazy and killing everyone, it's an evil version of Professor X. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about them using Cassandra Nova, Professor X's evil twin, as the main villain of the movie? I definitely like that they're not just going back to a version of Scarlet Witch being the main villain or some old tropes from previous X-Men movies. Speaking of Scarlet Witch, a lot of people wondering if they're going to revisit the 838 universe in the aftermath of Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. There were a lot of rumors in the last couple of years about them doing that and then removing it from the movie. I don't know if that's true or not, but it would be funny if Deadpool is jumping through different universes and his montage doing missions for the TVA and just happens to glance at the 838 universe and they have some funny reference to the aftermath of her attack during that movie. There is a lot of adjacent Scarlet Witch plot that's happening during the Agatha Coven of Chaos or Darkhold Diary show, whatever they wind up calling that. There's a whole big meme about the show changing its title every single time they drop some new footage. Right now, the main version of Scarlet Witch is sort of on ice in another dimension called the Witch's Road, which is a trope from the recent Scarlet Witch comics. At the end of Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, her body was destroyed, but her chaos magic allowed her soul to be transferred to the Witch's Road, which is a special alternate dimension that only witches can enter. 
It's a bit of a spin on the whole concept of what happens after you die during the Moon Knight series. Like they kind of explain that in the MCU. Your consciousness transfers to another dimension based on your belief system or if you have a contract with a higher level cosmic being. So for Scarlet Witch, her consciousness just transferred to the Witch's Road and they'll follow up with the return of her character after Agatha, Coven of Chaos or whatever that show winds up being titled. So there are any lingering 838 universe references during Deadpool and Wolverine. It'll probably just be all the characters who survived Scarlet Witch's attack being super pissed off, wanting revenge on Wanda. But as soon as we get more Deadpool and Wolverine footage, of course I will do more videos or if we see more Easter eggs out there. If you spotted any that I haven't talked about in this video, just write them below in the comments. Most of the other trailer Easter eggs I cover in the trailer videos that I did. And because we're talking about so much X-Men stuff right now, big reminder that X-Men 97 episodes are coming in a couple weeks. I'll be doing videos for all those. There'll be 10 total and we'll probably get another trailer for that pretty soon. To me, my X-Men. Make sure you enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss any of that. And the other cool thing is that the rest of the Invincible Season 2 episodes will be airing at the same time. So we'll have X-Men episodes and Invincible episodes at the same time. It's going to be really good. Everybody click here for my brand new X-Men 97 trailer video and click here for all my Deadpool and Wolverine trailers. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Maximum effort.